Hello, pilots of the internet. Welcome to Foldable Flight. My name is Kyle, and this is where I teach you how to fold paper airplanes that will blow your mind. Today's plane is called Monarch, and you can see that it is a beautiful glider. It looks a lot like a butterfly, which is where it gets its name. And I folded this one using Astrobrite's Celestial Blue Paper. I've been over it before, but I just like Astrobrite's because it's a little thicker than your average uh, copy paper, and also the colors are really brilliant. But if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, you can fold it out of my Patreon template for the plane, and this really, guys, adds something special. You can see here the design is just of a beautiful butterfly, and yes, I know this is not a monarch butterfly. Get off my back. It's a liberal interpretation of uh, the idea that this is just an origami butterfly that actually flies. And I'll be planning on making more templates in the future anyways, so I didn't feel like naming it after this specific butterfly. Let's see it in flight. you'll need in order to fold Monarch is an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper and with that paper we're going to begin by folding the right edge to the left edge. And once you've done that unfold it and now fold your top edge to the bottom edge. And we'll open that up as well. Next, just fold this top edge to our horizontal center crease here. This plane begins easily, but we'll soon find ourselves in a bit of a mess as it gets quite complicated but hopefully you're enjoying the calm before the storm. And we'll open that back up. And I actually wanna flip this over. And now fold this edge here. You can see this crease to this center crease. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to gather that between our thumb and forefinger and pull it down and land it on that horizontal center crease. and then you crease, and the crease you're making is actually behind this top layer, you can see right there. And next we're going to take this top edge and fold it to this edge here. And we'll flip the paper over, and just fold down on this existing crease here. So essentially we should have an accordion of folds all landing like this. And this next step is pretty difficult. I'll try to explain it, but you may have to watch it a couple of times to really see what I'm doing. What I want to do is create a crease that is 45 degrees starting right here at this point uh, on the center crease where it intersects the top edge. I want the 45 degree angle to go down and stop on this top layer. And the way I'm going to create that is by taking this top edge and folding it to our center crease by only grabbing this top layer. And you'll see as I do that, as I pull these layers towards the center, I'm landing this edge here, this edge, on my center crease, which hopefully you can see there. And once I do that, I want to flatten just this layer that I'm working with. And I'll open that back up to show you. See how I've created that 45 degree angle that's just on this top layer. But I actually want to continue that process. So once I have pulled the one layer in, 
I'm going to want to do things with these other layers as well. And the reason this model is difficult is because for this whole sequence of steps, the paper doesn't lie flat. We have to work with the fact that it's in a three-dimensional form. And when I turn it to the camera a little bit, you can see what we're working with. We basically have a pocket here and a pocket here. And I want to take the spine between those two pockets and kind of pinch it between my fingers. And I'm going to want to take this side of the pocket here and fan it outward. So I'm pulling that whole pocket to collapse it into a flat shape. So hopefully I can do this without blocking what I'm doing. I'm grabbing the, sorry, let me get that in realignment. So with my left hand, I'm holding uh, this layer down. With my right hand, I'm grabbing this spine and I kind of want to run my fingers on it and pull it tight so that it pulls and creates a corner between this side of the pocket and this side before those layers were stacked on top of each other. But instead I want to fan them out and once I have them fanned so that this spine goes down, tapers right down to that corner, then once I've achieved that, I'm going to press flat. You can't really see where the crease is being formed, but you can feel it behind this layer here. You're going to press that flat all the way in to the back corner of this pocket here. So you can see what we've done. This was essentially like this, right? And we pulled open one pocket. And we're going to then pull open this next pocket in the next step. So again, I'm placing that edge on my center crease and holding it there. I've flattened this and now I'll pin it with my left hand. And now I pinch this crease, this spine here, run my fingers along it to get the layers to kind of obey what I'm trying to tell them to do and pull it creating a corner right there, right here, as I fan those layers outward. And once I've accomplished that, I'm going to crease right along here, which again, you can't see the crease above the paper, but you'll feel where you're creating it just under this top layer. And now we have a bulge here on the outer edge, pressing all the other layers flat we're just going to press that outward like so. And so we've created the basic shape of the right wing of the plane. Or I guess we're looking at it from what will be the bottom, so this is technically the left wing, but you know, save the confusion, right? So now we wanna repeat that step, that whole set of steps on the left side. I'm going to hold these layers here as they are, but you can let them go. You can push them back to this position. It's not a big deal, but this will help me by leaving them here, will help me align the other wing and make it identical. But if it helps you just to fold it at all, to let go of these layers, you know, whatever you need, if you need both of your hands to do this other side. But I'm going to pull this and line up my edges and press in until I crease. And you can see right here, right here is where I'm making that 45 degree crease we were talking about. So I will press that flat. And now holding the plane. I want to kind of massage this spine here into pulling outward and creating that corner right down here between the two layers. And then once I've achieved that, I will create a crease right along here. And again, you can't see that crease. It's actually happening under this top layer. And then I will grab this spine here and pull it outward, creating a corner right there. And I will 
crease along its edge. Again, you can't see that. And now we have just this bulged area on the left that we want to flatten like so. So congratulations if you've accomplished that. That is definitely the hardest part, but we do still have another little tricky part right in front of us. You can see our plane still is not a flat shape. We have this kind of collection all standing up near the front of the plane. And to flatten that, I'm essentially going to gradually push my fingers in until these layers here and here become tight to the nose of the plane, at which point I will hold them in place and pull this forward again. As I'm pulling forward on this, I'm collapsing it. I want to make sure that those layers stay tight so that the shape of the flap I make ends up being a triangle. And I know that's tricky. But you can kind of see the shape I'm guiding these all into and slowly lowering that, forcing those layers to go under this flap that I'm making, keeping it tight and triangular. I drop that down and then make, I'll solidify the creases on either side of it. Okay, and next I want to essentially do the same thing with these layers here. I'm going to lift this tab up and tuck these layers in on either side of it, like so, and forcing them to make creases underneath it as I press this whole thing down together. And I'll show you where those creases land once I've completed this step. Okay, so there's what it looks like when you're done. Here's what the crease looks like. So I have a valley crease right here and a mountain crease on the edge of the triangle. And the valley crease basically, the space between this mountain crease here and this valley crease here goes tucking under the triangle. Okay, so now we are truly through the hardest parts of this plane. We'll flip this over and begin working on it from this side. I want to take this edge here and fold it to this front edge here. Okay, and now I'm going to fold this outer edge back so that the crease I make lands on this edge here. I'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, and now we actually want to open the plane back up like this, and then we're going to reverse this crease here, which is a valley crease, and we're going to reverse it so that we tuck all these layers, or I guess it's just one layer, tuck this layer behind and into the plane. So just massaging that crease a little bit. We can reverse it like so. And as we tuck that into the plane, you'll see we already have creases where these need to reverse as well. So it'll look a little bit like this, and if we close our model back up, it should look like this now. Okay, and now I'm actually going to open it, and this is gonna be a little tricky to show you too. 
but I'm going to pull out like this so that we have a nice view of what's going on here. I want to fold this edge here to this edge right here. And I'm only going to do that in the middle. Okay. And I'll crease, I'll make a crease along this, this new crease here until it reaches this diagonal crease on either side. So as you do that, you're just going to crease out from the middle only up until you reach that crease. And the way you can tell is there's a mark on this, uh, this underneath layer. And once that kind of reveals itself and your crease has hit that, you are to that point. Okay, so I've reached that on either side. You can see my crease goes to where that diagonal crease is. And I want to create diagonal creases that land on the existing diagonal creases. Like so. And again, those just go until they reach that. You can see we have kind of a three-dimensional pocket. So I'll open that up. You can see we have a horizontal crease here that hits these diagonals. And then diagonal creases that again just end where they intersect that diagonal. And once we've done that, our plane once again doesn't quite lie flat. We'll collapse the whole thing in on itself. Like so. And now I'm going to flip it over before I flatten anything. You can see these layers here on the outer edge don't lie flat. I'm going to just flatten them like so on either side. And there you go. You've made it through all the folding you have to do for Monarch, but we're going to do something really quick to help it fly a little better. We'll curve the wings slightly. So you can see we have it like this. I want to curve this fuselage of the plane, this central section, and then just kind of continue that curve. And it's a very gentle curve to continue that curve outward and help these wings have a little bit of shape to them. Because the way we throw this plane, you can see it doesn't have a place that you hold like a lot of planes. In fact, you're just going to pinch it like this. And when you launch it, you let go, the wings will open up like so. And so you want them to have a little bit of a curve to it. Otherwise, if it's completely flat, the layers might want to unfold a little bit, or uh, also it won't have very much directional stability. So just adding a little bit of curve to the wings will help stabilize the plane. I hope you were able to get through this fold. I know it's the hardest one I've posted yet for sure. So let me know if there's any way I can help, maybe a different camera angle, if uh, or maybe you were completely able to get through it, no problem. But uh, I, I think this is one of my best planes, so I wanna make sure that you guys are able to fold it. So let me know if you had any issues and I will help you as best I can. Be sure to subscribe for more awesome paper airplane content by clicking on my channel icon in the top right corner or check out another one of my videos here. And if you really like what I do, head over to foldableflight.com or patreon.com slash foldableflight. And as always, thank you for watching.